Hey guys, it's James Upjohn here from MagicSubmitterTutorials.com. Today I want to talk to you about projects and profiles in Magic Submitter, the differences between the two, and some common usage of projects and profiles, uh, how to create them and why it's important. So over in the left-hand corner of the screen, you're going to see a folder icon with a green arrow pointing out of it. If you hover over it, it says open profile. And the first thing that we're going to look to do, this is going to be blank by default when you first load it up. And um, what we're going to need to do is we're going to have a quick look at manage projects. And there's a couple of different ways that you can look to set up your magic submitter. But the way that I like to do it is I like to create projects based on niches. And to do that, I'm going to click on Manage Project, and you'll see that I've got three different icons at the top here. Um, the first icon, I can add a new project. The second icon, I can edit a project that I've already created. Let's say, for example, I wanted to change the name of one project I'd created. I can simply edit it and give it a new name. Or if I've created one in error and I don't need it, I can just delete that project off. So I'm going to delete off that project that I've created and then show you how to recreate that. We will click on create a new project. And let's just say, for example, I had a bunch of clients that were in the restaurants niche. What I can do is I can create a new profile, a new project called restaurants. And then when I click save on, I've now got a project created called restaurants. So I can close this tab now. And in the drop down menu, I've now got a new project called restaurants. And there's the default one there. Now, the sort of theory behind looking at projects with Magic Submitter is that we're going to eventually go out and create aliases of people that are going to do our Magic Submitter submissions for us. And basically, what these aliases will do is we're going to give Magic Submitter a bunch of information, names, addresses, telephone numbers, etc., to go out across the internet and to be linking back to our website um, with our content. We don't want to use our real information in those because one thing that Google doesn't like is people that link back to their own websites through self-promotion. So Magic Submitter is going to create some fake information for us, fake name, fake address, fake telephone number, etc. And then that gives the impression to Google that the reason that people are linking back to us is because they genuinely like our content and they're not affiliated to us in any way. So by creating projects what we can actually do is we can then segment those um, aliases that we're creating so that they only ever post about content that's related to one particular subject rather than just randomly posting about lots of different things so the first thing we did was we created the project called restaurants or obviously depending on the niche you're in it could be any niche related thing and i'm now going to ask magic to to go out and create the first profile for me and just before we do that we go along the top here and have a quick look again we've got some icons here the first one is if we've already got a profile created we could open up that profile and have a look at it or we can ask magic submitter to create a new profile or if we've got profiles we can edit that profile if we want to go in and make some changes to it we can also delete a profile. And if you've already got your own existing profiles, you can either import them into Magic Submitter, you can import them directly from a file, or you can export those selected profiles too. So what we're gonna do here is, first of all, is we're gonna create a new profile through Magic Submitter. And the first thing we need to do is at the top here, you'll see there's a fill profile button there's a nice green arrow there for us pointing directly to it and it is in orange at the top so you shouldn't miss it really and all we need to do is click fill profile and then magic submitter is going to give us a few different options down here that we can choose the best choice to pick is to download a pre-created account alex the owner of the software has gone out and he's created lots of different accounts for us and they're all saved on the main magic submitter database so we can just download one straight from there it's the quickest and easiest option to use alternatively we can choose to use outlook.com instead the reason why we would want to use outlook instead is let's say for example um 
we wanted to create our own customized email address or magic submitter by default only allows people to download five pre-created accounts per day so if you've used if you've already downloaded your five pre-created accounts you can just choose outlook from the drop down menu and choose to create the account there as well you can use hostgator accounts and you can use other services too if you've got other email addresses however it is highly recommended that you do stick to using one of the free accounts simply because most free accounts by default have got pretty relaxed spam filters and magic submit is automatically pre-programmed with outlook and hotmail to be able to go in there and assign message rules and to make sure that nothing hits your spam folder that's all taken care of for you you don't need to worry about doing that with those if you want to start using your own email addresses with your own hosting providers um, you will need to go in and create that so it's just a little bit of extra work to do so again I highly recommend just to stick to one of the default two that come with the software so I'm gonna choose download pre-created account when it comes to the country selection you've got plenty of different options here that you can choose from what I typically tend to say to people though is that most of the time in the two years that I've used magic submitter I've never chosen a country other than the US most of my clients are in the UK but the people that are linking back to them in the US it hasn't created a problem for me so if your country isn't in there don't worry about it too much it's never been a problem for me just to use the USA what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna click OK on that and magic Submitter is gonna go off and connect to its database and it's gonna download a pre-created account for me so now that magic submit has connected to the database you can see that it's pulled off some information for us here um, magic submitter has gone out and has created a fake name and address for us we've got here Minta del tufo and magic submit has also gone and created a load of login names for us these login names are spinnable it's created some site names for us a name address telephone number and email address and at the bottom of the profile we've got a few fields that we need to fill in now any one of these fields in here is fully customizable okay see so if you wanted to go in and change the address you could if you wanted to change the login names you could or the site names if you did want to put any login names in like maybe say for example you wanted to use your own ones just make sure that you keep those to under 15 characters total length and also if you wanted to go in and say you wanted to change the site names there isn't a specific character limit on those but just make sure that if you are going to put any of your own content in those you keep it very well spun just to make sure that you're not leaving a footprint with Google so I've just gone and created this profile it's under the restaurants niche so I'm gonna call this profile restaurants one and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna real quickly just talk to you about these login names that magic submit has created so at the end of quite a few of these fields you're gonna see a little box here with a picture of a wizard in there and if we click on that it will open up a text editor box now this text editor box here is going to show us that what magic submit is going to do to choose these login names is it's picking 10 words for us then it's going to spin a random two digit number here and then it's going to put a random word on the end and it's got 10 of those to choose from so if we click the magic one button we can check here and see that we've got uh, quite a lot of different um, login names that magic submitter can go out to all of these different accounts online and create those for us like I say you can customize that if you want to make sure that you keep that total length of those spins under 15 characters and what's going to happen here is magic submit has got a site name as well um, the site name is basically used as the subdomain for a URL so if I was going to go out and I was going to create a wordpress.com blog and I wanted to use my name I could do and the subdomain would be my name so it would be jamesupjohn.wordpress.com so again this is spun to make sure that we got lots of different variations of it and um, finally if we look down at the bottom of magic submitter we've got three fields here we've got web URL we've got company name and we've got site description now when it comes to the web URL there are a handful of sites in magic submitter that do require that the URL starts with the HTTP 
So what I'm going to do here is I don't want to give Magic Submitter my real company info because I want to give Google the impression, as I said earlier, that people are linking back to me because they like my content. I don't want Google to see that actually I've created these. I'm linking back to my website and then every post that I'm creating on that website is also linking back to me as well. So it needs to include HTTP. But all I'm going to do is I'm just going to spin some random sites. Um, let's just say like Facebook or Google or Yahoo or Bing. You can put as many of these in as you like. And then I'm just going to put a .com on the end. So that when Google comes along and checks out this site, um, the, the person that has created this blog has got a homepage URL of Bing.com. They're not affiliated to the stuff that it's going to be posting about in any way at all. The next thing that I'm going to look at is the site title. For those people who know what a title tag is on a website, that's what it's going to be used for. But for those people who are not sure what a title tag is, if you were to go and look at a website in any browser, or you were to head over to Google and you were to put in a search phrase, the, the title that appears in blue in the results or it appears in white at the very top of your browser window, that is the title tag. So what we want to do here, it's going to be used for our Web 2.0 properties and we can spin this as well to make sure that there's um, lots of variation. But let's just say, for example, um, my I wanted my blogs to have the title a restaurants info blog like I say you can spin this um, but we'll just leave it like that there restaurants info blog let's just say I wanted to say restaurants info blog or restaurants info site for example and then finally the site description is going to be used in um, our web 2.0 properties as the meta description tag this is the black text that appears under the title in the search results and we can just keep this quite simple something like check out this amazing blog that discusses discusses all things related to the restaurant's niche Obviously, we need to spin this one as well. In one of the later videos, I'm, I am going to be talking to you about spinning. Um, but in very simple terms, if we just click on this wizard and you've got the magic article rewrite up, all we need to do is just click on the binoculars and you'll get here, check out. All we need to do is click on the um, notepad and pencil and we can say look at or take a look at and we can say this amazing, we can say fantastic, incredible, marvellous, superb, um, remarkable blog, we can say web blog, internet page and all I'm doing to go from one word to the next um, like I'm, at the moment I'm on blog if I want to press tab it'll move to the next word and tab again moves me to covers I can say looks at talks about press tab again all things is everything related to is associated with the restaurants we could say the dining establishments the eating places dining places let's just say niche industry or field okay so we can we can do that there and we can click okay and basically that's going to be the first profile created right there the last thing that we need to do is just quickly click click test connection just to make sure that magic submitter is able to successfully connect to that email address that is created. Sometimes when you're trying to create an account with Magic Submitter, you will get an error saying that it can't connect to the mailbox or when you're trying to um, manually create an account using the Outlook option, you might see an error that says um, unable to create account. If that happens, first of all, make sure that if you're running any proxy switchers, let's say like HMA, for example, um, make sure that the first thing you'll try and do is change your IP address. Some of the IP addresses in HMA do block port 995 by default, and you can see that this is the port that the POPs connect into. Change your IP address, um, try and recreate the account again, and one of the other things that you can also do to try and create the account is when we're in the profile here, 
if we double click on this particular profile that we've just created or we highlight it and click open down here magic submit is going to take us to that project we can see that in the bottom corner of our screen and we can see that we're now in profile name restaurants one so what i can now do is i can scroll down in this service type list to mail services and if i wanted to like if the site has failed this one hasn't you can see it's got a green tick in it but let's say it had failed it would now have a red tick in it all i would do is just highlight that and then i'll just click create account and magic submit will then go and try and recreate that account for you so hopefully that's um, explained projects and profiles for you the only other thing that i would like to mention is that rather than just creating one profile per project make sure that you create a few profiles per, per project so it doesn't always look like it's the same person linking back to you over and over again i really hope that that's been helpful to you i look forward to speaking to you again thank you very much